So for this session, um, high-speed virtual world content generation and assembly method, our speaker today is Ramesh Ramlal. Ramesh is the Chief Executive Officer and Chief Technology Officer of Deep Sense More LLC. So now let's begin the session. Take it away, Ramesh. Thanks uh, for the introduction. Um, yeah, um, so today I'm going to talk uh, about uh, rapid content generation. And uh, um, before I start, uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, my team uh, who've been uh, actually, you know, doing the heavy lifting for this work. Um, all right, so let's get to it. Okay, so our design framework encourages a mix of uh, 2D experiences, uh, which traditionally have been very effective in helping users achieve productivity goals, uh, traditionally. Uh, but within the context of uh, 3D um, environments. Um, I think it is important to start by stating our guiding design principles so that when I present the examples and, and the architecture of things that we've done, that you know, things are a little bit clearer. Okay, so here are our, the, uh, the design principles that actually drive our effort. Okay, so the first one is that we emphasize productivity over social. Okay, we can discuss about these later on, but I'm just listing them out. The second design principle is that we emphasize clarity before fidelity. And the third principle is we emphasize applications before worlds. And we pay at more attention to comfort than, uh, than full immersion. Okay. So uh, for clarity, for example, just to give uh, you know, some more explanation, a sketch of a scene can sometimes tell a bit better story than a very high definition rendering of that scene. So it is important to, that we have our priorities right before we start designing anything. Um, these are our design, uh, our de um, design assumptions. And um, so when representing data, 3D does not always trump 2D. Okay, we know that, uh, we know that from, uh, um, from the work of Edward uh, Tufte, for example, where we can see that in many cases 2D graphs are much better than, than 3D graphs in terms of you know, clarity of data representation. Um, and we also see that sometimes too much freedom at the user interface can hinder productivity. Okay, so that's something that's very important. And then the other assumption is that designing for casual users is not necessarily at the expense of advanced users. Um, if we take uh, the assumption two, for example, um, we can see that a 3D world can provide infinite navigation and camera control opportunities but that can come in the way of getting tasks done, you know, with minimum subjective workload. Okay. Um, and uh, we have observed that even if we started out designing for casual end users, advanced users seem to find our solution helpful, even even within the context of their current work practice. 
So uh, uh, the key design features of our current offering is as follows. We provide, uh, I'm trying to control this speak easy stuff. I'm sorry about that. It's just like too many buttons to press. <laughs> okay. Um, it, okay, let me just do that. Okay, our content uh, creation platform allows casual uh, users create at various scales, for example, small scale, medium scale, and large scale. And uh, for small scale uh, applications, you know, you can create, um, for, for example, molecular models, uh, sticky notes, uh, jewelry design, graphic editors, and uh, medium scale, uh, would uh, describe office layouts, exhibitions, garden design, Google panoramas, because we have integrated Google uh, panoramas into our application. I presented that last uh, OSCC. And uh, we can also use our same application for creating very large scale worlds. I just had a Marco Rubio moment here. Okay. So let me move to the next slide. All right. So users can create and experience virtual content through simple single finger interaction. We actually want to uh, get rid of uh, modal keys uh, because that forces you to uh, actually have to use two hands in order to interact with, with uh, you know, the virtual world. And the herd also gives users access to an organized visual inventory of objects focused on the task at hand. Um, and the herd also allows the user to save and load scenes created created by 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 the Resmila apps and maps. Well, apps are, are really like small versions of 3D applications, and maps are like for large scale uh, versions of applications. And uh, I described the map uh, application. Um, in, in uh, again in the you know last uh, OSCC where we we have a system that allows people to deploy very large scale content you know on a map and uh, a, a 3D virtual world is created you know uh, at the same time so there are some user interface uh, uh, advantages for doing this. Um, I'm going to linger a little bit more on this slide. If you look at the picture, you can see the herd, which is in the, the top left corner. And it's a really compact herd, and it's deceptively simple because there's a lot of functionality that goes in there. Um, and uh, at the bottom of the picture, you can see like just a stack of modules, but this is just to give you some idea to anchor these ideas on. It's like you have got a set of objects that you can organize and that is read by the application and presented on, on uh, through the HUD. And, and that way you can actually browse the list of objects that you are, have available and then you, you can deploy and put them in the world. Um, one of the things we, uh, we discovered is that um, while designing the system is that tiny tweaks vast, vastly improve user experience. And this can immediately be seen when you start observing how fast people start uh, completing tasks. Um, so there are two features that, that we have implemented recently, which is step, snap to grade and snap to view. And uh, a third one, which is automatic randomization in in object creation. And um, 
we will see a few examples where those are very useful. So for example, for, for the snap to grid option, you can position uh, objects uh, which may be like uh, tiles for for your for your land. Uh, it, it can actually be any kind of mesh objects, even including hills and and uh, any kind of surface. And you can place them very accurately and very quickly, uh, of a, you know, uh, and have something that's very neat. Um, they displayed. Another example is uh, of where, where Snap to Grid becomes useful is where when you want to create a building, for example, you can have uh, different modules of, build, of the building component, and you can just with a couple of clicks land on a custom, uh, you know, on a custom space, virtual space, virtual building. You can also use, uh, you know, find this to be very useful when creating pathways or information displays. And uh, these two pictures, for example, describe this idea of snap to grade. Um, and you can see that there is a honeycomb style building in the first picture. And uh, you can see uh, that you can, you know, just place those in a, uh, around, you know, on the different, contact points and end up with this uh, with this building the, the 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 hexagonal building is just an example of a building component we've got like you know dozens of building components that we have designed that allows you to um, you know to build a wide range of buildings uh, the the picture on 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 the right is uh, just a graphics editor so when you can actually draw things uh, on a board and you would, uh, you know, draw exactly in the same way uh, as you would if you're using uh, an object-oriented drawing program. Um, the, the, the next trick that I mentioned is the snap to view option. So in this case, uh, we wanted to optimize uh, user camera trajectories. And, uh, and uh, how this works is that the user just needs need to point at any object in the scene and the camera will be positioned automatically according to you know, the, the ideal position for, for every object in that scene. And uh, that simple approach also allows not only the user to focus uh, into a particular object, but they can also just pick something else in the background and zoom back out and have another view. And uh, it's very, it's, it, 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 it proved to be very useful, for, uh, especially for our meeting tools where users need to, uh, to dive in and look at, uh, let's say, post-it note and then back out again and to have the overview of all these, uh, you know, uh, information stuck on a wall. Okay. Automatic randomization uh, is something very simple. Again, very simple things have huge impact. So when you're drawing, when you're trying to create, let's say, an organic, uh, uh, a natural looking landscape, um, what you would do is you select uh, you know a random option and you pick you know your trees, objects, rocks, etc., and you just place them uh, in world and it's going to be randomized in a in a, and 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 this gives rise to to a, to to a, a very natural landscape. Okay, and we we have started using our tools well. As we were developing them, we have started integrating these tools in our own work practices. So we use them for creating virtual campuses, uh, you know, showcase and demonstration islands. And then we have a meeting tool that we use uh, at at every hour, uh, one of our meetings. And uh, and then you know, the last two slides would just show you how 
you know, uh, like the results of of these processes. So you have the the virtual uh, cam campus hub uh, on the left, and then you have you know the meeting tools on the right, and and the next slide just describes you know um, the 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 drawing package that we built. Again, all these diverse applications can could only happen because we have implemented an infrastructure underneath and that's the Resmila system. Of course it's not possible to describe the Resmila system in 15 minutes. But what the, the take home message is that we have this system, it allows you to create a range of applications. Our interest is this we want to merge the best of 2D experiences at the desktop, which have proved to be very useful as far as productivity is concerned, but use them within the context of a 3D world where social functions appear to be more natural. And, and by bringing the two together, I think we can create 3D virtual experiences with a balanced productivity and uh, social goals because people need a reason to work to log in i am someone who wouldn't log in to dance for example in the virtual world i want to log in to actually do something and get some work done so um that's you know uh so for for users with this kind of attitude that could actually help and and also with the snap to view the 3D applications will look, will provide a 2D experience uh, to, to you. So, you know, so if you go in and access a drawing package, you will have the 2D experience. And, uh, you know, and uh, so, so that's how we, uh, we, we are trying to, to, to keep the good from the old and merge it with, you know, what the 3D world promises. And uh, that, that's that's uh, our journey so far. So I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ramesh, for a terrific presentation. We do have a couple of questions that came in via the chat. Lisa Laston mm -hmm. asks if these methods are available as open source tools. Well, actually, um, in January, we are going to have uh, our grid will be open, and we'll start. Be, we'll start having um, people, you know, try the things out, and uh, and and uh, that's uh, as much as I can uh, say right now. Uh, regarding uh, whether it's open source or not, that's of course that's open to evolution. I think we've invested probably around four years. Um, Developing these the whole infrastructure, and uh, so so we'll have to think about how to how to design our our efforts so that it's a sustainable one, because most of us actually leave off what we are producing. I see, and that sort of answers a question that Frank Ruloff um, presented, which is where can we try out this technology. Yes, it will be available in January on the Reismela grid. And then any efforts for future research where you would like to go? Um, well, um, the, 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 they are obviously um, for each and every strand of what we presented from from the, the 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 module design, the modules are basically groups of of objects that you can assemble into more complex parts. So you can have modules uh, mo for for architecture. You can have modular parts. Okay, some some a lot of uh, of creative effort has to go into the design of those. If you want to design a meeting tool, you have to think of what are the the building blocks. For the meeting tools, so are they going to be text objects, image objects, browser objects? Um, for panoramas, you you have another set of uh, 
you know, uh, objects that would go into those modules. So every application is a research project, really. And uh, that will, so there are plenty of opportunities, you know, not only for, for advancing the underlying platform, but also for advancing the modules uh, so that we end up with, with uh, a, a vast variety of uh, applications. And uh, I, I, I want to say that uh, initially I was a bit uh, afraid that having, uh, you know, uh, things designed around modules would be limiting in the sense that, uh, you know, that would hurt diversity of content. But what I have found is that it actually explodes it. So I think we're on the right track. Fantastic. Well, thank you again, Ramesh, for such a fin such a thorough presentation. Do you have a booth here in Expo 3? Well, we've been so busy developing that we really didn't get, I mean, we really prepared um, for the presentation in kind of a rush, so I okay. apologize. <laughs> That's uh, okay. We certainly appreciate you getting up at the time you and had to I'm get up. I'm currently, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> far from home. So I'm in the middle of the ocean and all that, you know, so it takes a lot of... <laughs> well, I would okay. like to... Anyway, I would like to um, remind everyone to make sure you do visit the poster expos in, in uh, Expo 3 and also the sponsors booths in Expo 2. We have to set up now for our next presentation, which is highlights from mainstreaming virtual world learning colloquium. So stay right here. It's going to start in just a few minutes. Thank you again, Ramesh. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.